Hello and welcome to the Spider's Web. <laughs> uh, what are we planning on doing today? Well, as you probably saw when I moved, we're going to be doing the painting and uh, we're going to be using acrylic. We're going to be doing it fairly thick on the paper, not well, on the canvas rather. Um, so it's going to be coming straight out of the tube. But even so, obviously we need the clean water, or the water to clean the brushes with. But I also want a small pot so that I can uh, use a little bit of clean water if necessary um, just to help it move forward a bit better. I've also got my disposable palette which is basically very thin um, sheets like uh, not a laminate but a, a shiny paper. I can you could use baking um, baking sheets or anything like that, but this is sold and uh, because it's white you can see the paint, see the colours of the paint better as you're mixing on there. Um, I've got a little table down here just in case you're wondering what I'm, I'll put it on. I've um, also got the paints. Um, I'm using Galeria paint, which is... Uh, I'm using a series of just really, really, really cheap brushes. It's acrylic. Acrylics ruin brushes, so don't worry about getting anything uh, special. Um, this jump is coming off in a second because the sleeves do me nothing because they keep falling down. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the brushes. Yeah, you don't need to worry about getting decent brushes for acrylic. Um, cheap old brushes will do fine, you know, the kind we can get. So it's like 10 or 20 for a few pounds. Um, that's the other ones I tend to use. Uh, they're all in here. They've all been well used, as you could probably see. Um, I really need to clean them up properly, but well, they do the job as is. Oh, there's another. Oh. I just found another tube of uh, yellow paint in there, but I must have bought two instead of just one. Right, so. What we're going to do, well, I've got an idea of doing a landscape, a woodland scene I'm thinking. Um, so what I will do is, <coughs> I'm going to pause the video, pause the camera for a couple of seconds, but I'll take my jumper off, get myself prepared, and then we'll come back. I'll have uh, altered the uh, viewpoint of the camera so you can see the canvas better. Okay, so I'm, I'm back. As you can see, the jumper's gone. Um, now what I've done with the, cam with the canvas is I've attached it just with a little bit of blue tack to a sheet of uh, plywood. And then it's attached, then the, attached the plywood to the um, easel instead of just doing the, instead of just putting the canvas on the easel and hoping for the best. I've done it this way because if I used it, there's little brackets you can see here, they would overlap the canvas and you know it wouldn't give, you know I'd, I'd be continually having to move the canvas around, run the risk of getting fingerprints in the, pa in the paint and um, basically having to go over bits that I've already done to correct parts where I've accidentally touched the canvas after it's been painted. So that's all nice and sturdy. Um, so what do we plan on doing? Well, I said I was going to do a um, a wooden scene so I'll get some blue out. I'm using uh, ultramarine blue for this for the time being. And we need some sap green for trees the leaves and the grasses, a little bit of sap green. And we also need some white. This really is just for mixing. It's sealed up a little bit. Just pull it off there. That was the paint, it wasn't me, just in case you heard a very strange noise there. Tend to need a lot of white with acrylic. 
and I say it's, it tends to it's used really for um, mixing your paint, getting lights and lighter shades. Um, another one I do like to use is Page Grain. I don't have much of this left. I'm gonna have to get some more. This one is a cracking colour for making green, surprisingly enough. Um, and we've got some lemon yellow <coughs> and I can find it. There we are. It's of raw umber. And vermilion hue, which is a red colour. Um, now these are the ones basically that we'll be using. I might be, I might use, I might be bringing out some more other colours besides, but um, this so far is what we're using. So let's get cracking, shall we? Just get my brushes out. It's a, a decent sized brush, and. I'll pick this up and show you what I'm doing so first. So we want a bit of sky. So if we use some of the blue, a bit of the red. Blue with a bit of the red, blue with a bit of the white. I was looking at red when I said that. Um, and we want to make a nice pale. You don't want to overmix it so that it's all um, one colour. A sort of solid colour. And what we want to do is just scrub some colour. Oh, this is going to be um, but most of it is going to be hidden by trees. So we don't really want too much um, of the sky showing. Add a bit more white. I will do the top as well as we go. And use little, you can have use little crisscross strokes like that or circular strokes depending on how you feel. Whichever, whichever way you feel comfortable with, you can use that. I prefer little circular strokes because I think when you use circular strokes it um, is more natural. Um, you can't really blend as well with acrylic as you can with the wet on wet technique as done by um, people like Bob Ross and uh, Wilson Bickford and and uh, artists with that uh, technique but um, you can still mix obviously just use a bit of water with it but when it's wet well when it's dry like this or straight you know, straight out of the tube then you don't get the same ability to blend you can blend it as I said but you don't get the same um, Also blending ability it's not as easy to blend with acrylic so I'll just put a bit of a cloud in there there we go what's your sky done? I mean that's a sky dog. Yeah, that's a sky dog. I'm not working from anything. I'm just making this up as I go along. So um, I can't really show you any reference what I'm using. I, I, I tend to paint um, where I can um, I could just slap paint on. And hope for the best. So next, 
what we're going to be doing. Oh, so Payne Square makes a good green. Watch this. Payne's grey. Quite a bit of it. Lemon yellow. It's a really, really nice deep green. And what we're doing with this is new enough everywhere. But when you get to the sky, down. Because that will give the effect of trees. The rest of the place you can just scrub it on. Like I said, it's going to be a woodland, so... Um, it's going to be dark. And don't worry if you run out of paints that you've mixed. You can always paint them up. You can always mix them all. If it's not the same shade, it doesn't matter. If you don't want a uniform shade, you can put a little bit more black in it if you wish. When I say black, I mean paint grey. You can make it a bit darker. Some places will be darker than others. And yes, this looks a mess. At the moment. But... You'll soon see when we get round to finishing that uh, well, you can't make a judgment when you first start off. Oops, I need a little bit more yellow than that. A bit too much yellow, never mind. As I say, it doesn't have to be um, the same, exact same shade. Just scrub it on. Just scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. Now here we're. Let's so have we get down to the where the uh, sky is. Dab it to make it look like foliage. And already, if you look here, it looks as though those trees there don't make it uh, don't make it um, uniform around here. Have some tall, some light, some different shades of green as well. lighter, get darker. I say all these different shades will give more um, what's the word I'm looking for? Give more depth to your painting because it makes it look as though there's other things going on that you possibly can't see. Normally when I do trees against a, a decent sky, I have a tendency of, well I haven't got a tendency of, what you should do is leave some spaces. If you're doing a great big tree, don't do it all solid like that. If you're having a sky behind it, what you want is um, gaps so you can see the sky. Waste time having the sky there if you're not going to see it. Um, when, you when you're doing it, just uh, just think to yourself, if I make this solid colour, it doesn't look as though anything can move through it, so if there's any birds flying around, they might bang into them, they'll hit it and fall down, they need some wood to fly through. So, as I said, we just screw up the green on. Screw up the green on. And that's it. At the moment, we're just 
filling in the background. Which is just the base colour for all the bits that's going on before it. On top of it. And you see you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Well you can't paint a picture without putting the background in. Um, the look I'm going for in this is a dark, heavy, wooded area, um, forest, uh, if you've read Lord of the Rings, um, like a murk wood. It's not going to be murk wood, it's not going to be as dark and as oppressive as um, murk wood is depicted in the books but it's that kind of thing it wants a, a quite a dark oh dark dark forested area lots of trees not much sky Okay, so it tends to grow incredibly quickly. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there you go. So that's it all, basically, filled in and. Looking at the screen on the camera, it does look as though I can see I can see things in there that has given me the idea of what I'm going to do. I can see a path coming down here, bushes here, and trees in the background behind the bushes. So that's how we work it. Now, before we do any um, Before we do any more in the line of um, bushes and paths, what we're going to have to do is get the trees in the background in. Oh, I'm just hoping my arm holds up while I'm doing this. Okay, so into this green mixture we've already made, I'm putting a bit more lemon yellow. A spot of white, a bit of sap green, there you go, I don't know whether you can see that because the, I'm getting a bit too close to the white uh, light there, but I'm trying to make this just a touch more um, brighter than I normally would have been on camera because I don't know how it's going to show up on camera um, fingers crossed you can now see you can see it's all okay but if you can't I do apologise so what we'll do is shall stab the uh, pallets Break up the. I don't know whether you can see that. Not really, no. Break up the bristles. I think you can see that part there. When you break up the bristles like that, it gives. Good, very good. Leaf effects. Don't do the mold um, the same way. Rotate, you know. Try and find, try and make about two or three trees out of the colour. This is just the medium, this is just the mid colour. I've got another colour, I've got a paler colour yet to go on. And these trees in the background, you could almost class them as done, but we just want to do a few there. So I 
hope you can see that, okay. Let's see, let's have a close look here. It's just showing up. Okay, so that's one side done. And then we'll go for the other side. We'll do exactly the same thing. We're making the leaves on trees and it's an easy job to do. It's an easy, easy job to do. I've not done the sides or the bottom of this in the dirt green. I could do that again, doesn't matter. And it's just for this side. And there's nothing stopping you when you're doing this and going over and putting leaves and things where it's just blue sky. So that's, as you can see, the sky, what I put on, is near enough gone. We've just got a nice clearing. Right, so that's that one done. Now what we're going to be doing is tree trunks. Now for tree trunks, I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush, a slightly smaller brush, a very smaller brush. And we'll be using a spot of the brown. See there, a spot of the red, and the white. A bit more brown, I think, and darken it up with a touch of the Payne's grey. Gonna put a bit too much white in. That's rough with the colour I want. And the paint grey being a bluey grey, it doesn't actually make it darker, it just changes the flavour of the, of the colour. In fact I want to mix more because I want some more trees. So, brown, red, white. Blue instead of the grey, Payne's grey. That make it a little yeah, it looks much better. I'm hoping you can see that. But uh, so with the lighting in here you probably can't. So what we need to do is we have we need to work out where the trees live. So I'm thinking one leaves around there. If you notice when I did that, I didn't hold the brush and keep it like that on the way around. What I did was I twisted it and I should have started at the top but it gives it a much nicer and a much more natural um, look to, to the tree than just simply doing a brown line. I'm going to do something again over here because that bottom I'm not having a ink it and yeah. <laughs> um, and just to um, clarify something else as well. Um, I'm not going right to the top of the canvas as you can see. 
because that's going to have more leaves over the top of it. Um, we also want some trees in the background here. So I want them fairly thin, so I'm just going to wobble. Wobble the brush I'm going down the uh, going down with it. And on this side, same again. these are but and do is going to be a fairly big thick tree because this one is going to be coming down a bit further than the others and I'll have some branches or two Maybe from this one to add a touch of Payne's Grey to this mix and I'm going to put a tree back there I'm hoping you can see all this telegraph poles or anything like that. They are trees, they have branches, they have leaves coming off them. And as you can see, as I hope you can see, shapes they're not um uh, they're not all uniform they're all the same shape they're all the same size they aren't all even the same colour but they're all trees in the same wood right to do now? Well, 
as I said, I wanted a path in there. I think what I'm going to do now is mark out where I want the path to go. So, you know, if I'm going to use a bit of the brown with a bit of the white, with spots of red, not too much red. I think what we'll do is we'll make it coming from around there. What I'm doing is it's a rocking movement. I'll be tidied up afterwards. So don't worry about it looking a bit dodgy at the edges. Make it as yeah. well almost looks. Done. but it's not because what we need to do now is put some highlight areas on the trees and we'll do this before we put any leaves and foliage over the top of them it's not quite dry yet but again that doesn't matter in this and we use a very similar colour to what we've just used we use brown spot of red white and I say it's near enough the same colours we've just used for the path a touch more white I think little bit of green let's give it a slight greenish tint okay and what I'm using to do this now to load the brush is I'm going to get all the paint off the brush as I can get and then rocking it backwards and forwards with the width of the brush to give a nice chiselled effect to the brush. I just want the paint to be on the tip. And then we we'll look to where the light's coming from. Well as you can see the the sky is there so the light is going to be coming that way. Pulse it just been. little bit in the background on these ones, not very much because you can hardly see them. And now this one, this area is dry. The trees aren't quite as dry yet. And what we're going to do, what we want to do, what we're trying to do is give the trees that 3D we do that and I'm going to show you on this one I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing on this new tree here okay and little curved Can you see that? 